The Word of God. Let us begin by singing of the Father's love begotten. Of the Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, He is Alpha and Omega, He the source, the ending, He of the things that are that have been, and that future year shall see evermore and evermore. O oh, that birth for ever blessed, when a virgin blessed with grace by the Holy Ghost conceiving for the Savior of our race and the babe the world's Redeemer first revealed his sacred face evermore and evermore. Let the heights of heaven adore him. Angel hosts his praises sing. Powers, dominions bow before him and extol our God and King. Let no tongue on earth be silent every voice in concert ring evermore and evermore christ to thee with god the father and o holy ghost to thee him and chant in high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be honor glory and dominion and eternal victory evermore and evermore. Amen. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Comes the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, those who teach and those who learn, that rejoice in the knowledge of thy truth, they may worship thee and serve thee from generation to generation. Through Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with thee, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from Isaiah. Chapter 51, verses 9 through 16. 
Awake, awake, close yourself with strength, O arm of the Lord, awake, as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced the monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea, so that the redeemed might cross over? The ransomed of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and singing will flee away. I, even I, am he who conforms comforts you. Who are you that you fear mortal men, the sons of men, who are but grass, that you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and lay, laid the foundations of the earth, that you live in constant terror every day, because of the wrath of the oppressor, who is bent on destruction. For where is the wrath of the oppressor, oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God, who turns up the sea so that it's waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 16. By faith, when called to go, to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Or by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect the builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah himself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from one man, and he is good as dead, uh, and so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came to sentence as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand of the seashore. And these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised, they only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. 
and they admitted that they were uh, aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have not uh, had opportunity to return. Instead, they were lo longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John chapter 7 verse 14 through 31. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself, but he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you uh, has not Moses given you the law, yet not one of you keeps the law? Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all astonished. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcised a child on the Sabbath. Now, if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing the whole man on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. At this point, some of the people of Jerusalem began to ask, Isn't this the man they are trying to kill? Here he is, speaking publicly, and they are not saying a word to him. Have the authorities really concluded that he is Christ? But we know where this man is from. Uh, when the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. Then Jesus, still teaching in the temple courts, cried out, Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him. But I know him, because I am from him, and he sent me. At this they tried to seize him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his time had not yet come. So many of the crowd put their faith in him. They said, When the Christ comes, will he do more miraculous signs than this? Glory to you, Lord Christ. So, one of the things here that uh, 
you know, John the Baptist here. Uh, I mean, it is the case that John the Baptist, he, he preached a message of repentance. And that's what we need to be about. It's the case here that, um, you know, anyone that, that basically does God's will, it's, it's said here, you know, knows. If Christ is speaking the truth or not. Um, and, you know, it's the case that some people, they speak on their own accord. And others, they speak on somebody else's accord. One of the things that we get here is that when people do God's will, mm. it's something foreign than their own. I mean often because of the fact that, you know, sin had alienated man from God. And uh, even like after there's repentance and, and whatnot, it's still the case that God is, you know, has a will that is going to be often should, I don't want to say should be, is going to have a will that is likely going to be different from our own. So it's like, just to give an idea here, you know, if, if our natural will is to, is to like, um, simply uh, you know go to school and promote ourselves um, that God's will might be that we you know humble ourselves in certain situations you know even though we might want to promote ourselves it's not always the case, it may not always be the case that that our will is different from God's will. It shouldn't be that way. But what I'm trying to say here, it's like this. Like, I used to work at a marketing firm for a very long time. And, uh, you know, in the marketing firm, there were certain phrases that we were meant to say you know and it'd be different every day and then we'd promote products and stuff and you know when we'd go in and and uh, be like what's what's called a brand ambassador then you know we would be promoting you know those phrases you know promoting the product and it would be the will, as it were, of the company to promote those, to promote the product and to, and to uh, say those phrases. So, you know, it would really be the will of the company. And, and the reason why it would be the will of the company is because um, the, the end customer there you know, that's what they want. It's it's their will, you know, and, and, and they're paying the company and then the company pays us or would pay us. And so, you know, it's kind of a similar thing that, you know, God's will is such that, that you know, he's got... Uh, an end in mind and then you know there's a mission it basically we uh, you know we we do that you know and and uh, you know when we are are uh, chosen to to do that 
Uh, and we, we do it till completion, basically. Now, there is a sense in which I want to tell you that it can be better to, in a lot of ways, to own a business than it is to work for somebody else because you can gain more of the uh, total value of the, uh, excuse me, the total value that, uh, uh, that you would get from the customer. Uh, now, when you do, then the customer is the boss. And it's easy to uh, have, I want to say easy. It might be, it would be easier for me, I think, in a lot of ways to, to have multiple customers than to have a situation where there's a lot of different jobs that are competing uh, and be able to manage all those. I don't say it'd be easier, it probably wouldn't be easier, but it would seem easier. <sighs> you know, when you got customers and you got a business you know, you go in and and you, you set, you have rules that you set and those rules basically serve the, the, um, the, the person that you're doing business with, the customer, and they protect, you know, to you as a business owner, you know, from the bad behaviors of the customer as well. And they protect the business from maybe some of those bad behaviors as well. And, uh, and so there's, there's a lot of rules that you have to have, uh, they have to establish to be able to do that, to be able to do business. And then when you hire employees and you take those rules and you give those rules to the employees, and then when those employees, um, you know, go out and they become knowledgeable enough about their jobs and stuff, then they can hire, or not hire, but they can become managers and hire other employees and then, and then, you know, put those rules on other employees and stuff. And, you know, it just kind of goes on like that. And that's, that's kind of how it is when you have a business. And uh, one of the things I'll tell you here is that I've worked, I've worked at a marketing firm for a very long time. I used to train employees and all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, what it was is that you know, you start out with basically, I'm going to blow my nose here, but you start out with a mission in mind at the very beginning. <laughs> so usually there's like kind of a mission in mind at the very beginning. You know, there's there's a goal of, of doing the business and stuff like that. And, uh, and, you know, I was kind of in there at the very beginning. And what happened there is that, uh, you know, I was just with the company for so long that it just kind of grew 
you know, the what I did just kind of grew out into other locations and stuff. And it became pretty big. And then I became, you know, like good enough at my job that I was able to go into those locations and uh, train new people and stuff like that and, and uh, do very well. And, uh, you know, the whole time there were principles that I had learned along the way that uh, I had accumulated and I even talked with other people about, you know, what made a good business, you know, what made the best business decisions and stuff. What were the best business decisions? What were the right ways to do things? So I gained all this knowledge. And this was not knowledge that our management had, you know, because they were usually here today and gone tomorrow. But I had been there for like 14 years. And so I had all this knowledge about, you know, how, how everything should go. You know, and I even talked to people that had worked in other states and, and had trained people in other states even and stuff and, and had overseen people and, and had done the same job as me. And they were able to explain, you know, policy, procedure, and rule and stuff and, and um, but basically you know I was able to then be very good at my job you know customers were very pleased by it and I was able to go out and train other people to be you know like me and then they were able to be very successful at their jobs and I'll tell you what the situation is that, you know, you might think that uh, doing God's will is like, yes, that you might think that doing God's will is, is like, you know, obeying a boss or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I know. But the situation is that it could be somewhat like having a business in that you know you you can if you understand what the mission is yeah and then if you were to um follow his orders the way he wants from us if you understand what the mission is and then if you um and nothing understand what the objective is then you know it, it is possible it, when given the proper authority yes, to do uh, much the same thing and uh, and that's where it, it really matters because you know what happens there is you get a situation where like, as, as with the example of me at the marketing firm, mm -hmm. that what happened is, um, mm -hmm. you know, I had just been there for so long and developed, you know, such a, a knowledge of how to do things that it was highly valued. And um, it was something that, you know, I was able to use that and go all over the place and and make money with that and, and do quite well. And like I say, it's, it's a, it, it work in like eight different states, basically. Mm -hmm. And like I say, it can be kind of a similar thing in that, in that, you know, doing ministry can be like having one's business, basically. Um, and that's where the goal then is to is to um, you know serve God mm -hmm. and um, and and to to you know firstly and then secondly to to serve the people and 
and uh, and so what I'm trying to say here is that the the main thing here is to is to do God's will, and and that's where like even even the the laws of God show that there is something different than like common knowledge basically that there's something different than than what like civil government teaches for example and in that something different comes from God who is quite a bit different than creation and that's where God is is you know very different than creation and then he gives these rules and and, and you know give the gives those laws and and uh, and it can convey its will into the world yeah. um, and that's where you know we can look at those things and I know that in graduate school I learned about the idea of taking the, the uh, law of God and looking at the principles that it teaches and then imposing those principles uh, like in you know New Testament that is possible to take the same principles a lot of the same principles and, and sort of import them into into the New Testament and uh, where I went to graduate school is called principalism basically and what I'm trying to say here is uh, one of the things as an example that, that I learned about when I did my Master of Business Administration because I did a Master of Divinity and I did a Master of Business Administration one of the things I learned about is this idea of critical success factors that critical, critical success factors are those things that are most essential to a job basically and uh, or the most essential to the success of a business basically so what it is is that you have to know what all those critical success factors are and then you have to develop a strategy for, for how you're going to uh, do those things, basically, in order to have success. Um, and it's kind of like the targets, as it were. You know, like if, if you, uh, I know with my mother, for example, my mother and I, that we had some we went to a fast food restaurant and we got some uh, cheeseburgers that the meat was raw. Now, you know, it might be a critical success factor that the meat at the fast food restaurant is fully cooked when it's served, that that may be a critical success factor. That, you know, it's critical to the success of the organization that, you know, the cooking it, it makes it so that stuff is fully cooked. Um, that whoever's cooking it cooks to be fully cooked. So, all this to say that, you know, if you are out there and, you know, you want to serve God today, um, first of all, you know, repentance this idea of sort of renouncing ourself in favor of, you know, God and his will. You know, repentance is, is very important. And second of all, you know, it's not just, um, you know, a matter of repentance, but then, you know, we want to be doing what God would like us to do, you know, that, uh, be able to uh, to work to fulfill the mission.
that God has. And so, needless to say, um, that's the best I can say here. Yeah. You know, I, I know that, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, repentance is important, that it's essential for, for Christian living. You know, I need to ask God for forgiveness practically every day. And, um, you know, we need to, we need to live a life of repentance. And when we do, you know, we're able to recognize a will that's different than our own. That's part of the whole act of repentance here is that we're able to see that there's there's not just our will you know but there's God's will that there's a will that's external to our own that you know when we turn back actually originally as I understand it I was told that Adam and Eve were in the garden of Eden and this is kind of the analogy here and then they were driven out from the garden yes but to to repent means in Hebrew like to turn back and go the way you came so for Adam and Eve to repent it would be like going back the way they came and returning to God. Yes. But they couldn't really do that because they were driven out and there was a flaming sword and, and all those other things. But Christ is a second Adam and he died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead and he gives us the ability to uh, to turn back and go toward um, the place that that Adam and Eve were banished from, and and be able to um, to return to it. There's there's a sense in which, if you think about this, if you really think about this, so Adam and Eve, you know, they they were in the Garden of Eden, and they got banished from it. And if you think about it, the whole life of Adam and Eve being in a foreign land in a place that was not their own and living that way and you know eventually like dying away from their home basically um you know the, the home that God had created for them yes um you know it, it, it's like a very sad story and then you know, generations come and it's the same way. And where there's always this idea of what was lost and this hope to somehow regain it, to, to, to go back and to have, you know, that, that Garden of Eden. And, you know, Christ came, gave his own life on the cross so that we could return to paradise, as it were. I'll just use the term paradise so we could return mm -hmm. and have something even greater than that. And so that's that's um, that's basically the story here. Mm -hmm. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus yes, Christ, Christ the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, uh, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate and from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the we believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern the whole authority of the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who bring in joy, may also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and for those of others. Father God, I pray for Archbishop Jewel, uh, that he said that he had some issues, I believe, with his hands or, or with uh, whatever it is, that uh, some kind of physical Ill, uh, issues uh, with with problems of doing stuff physically with his body. Pray that you would heal him. Pray for my mother that she uh, said that she had some kind of sores on her body and stuff like that that need to be healed. I pray that you heal those. Pray, Father God, for uh, Elka. Elka said she needed prayers. I pray that you uh, deliver her from all evil, uh, guide and direct her in all manner of righteousness and salvation. Mm -hmm. Pray, Father God, for myself with my job situation, that you would uh, deliver deliver me from all evil and getting a job that you would, uh, or whatever kind of career opportunities I would have, that you would guard me and direct me and provide me to have whatever it is that is good, godly for me that benefits me greatly and and where I'm able to really benefit others very greatly and most importantly as well about whatever it is I do, that you would uh, cause me to thrive and grow in all manner of righteousness and salvation uh, cause me to have more instead of less of all good things forgive my sins and trespasses I pray Father God that uh, you would also uh, uh, you know bless the uh, uh, you know potential there that uh, you know, I have for marrying my fiance, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, you would cause us to to grow in all manner of righteousness and salvation, and be be uh, married and uh, love one another. Uh, you know, all the time that we live, and be at peace with one another, and be able to enjoy each other incredibly. Yeah. Uh, pray, Father God, that uh, I will have uh, income from some sort of opportunity like employment opportunity or, or some other opportunity uh, something that i can you know, make progress toward and mm-hmm. basically work toward i pray father god that you deliver me from all evil guide and direct me guide and direct my paths pray that uh, things go well with uh, whatever employment that I do have and whatever opportunities I have and pray Father God that you cause men to be greatly blessed through me uh, deliver me from all evil and pray Father God that you would uh, greatly touch all those not mentioned that had asked for prayers 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you declare your glory and show forth your handiwork in the heavens and in the earth. Deliver us in our various occupations from the service of self alone, that we may do the work you give us to do in truth and beauty and for the common good. For the sake of him who came among us as one who serves, your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us uh, and forgive us that we may delight in your will and your walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and power, and by the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen. Your sins are absolved you. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a joyful and it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Mm -hmm. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we praise you, join our voice with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the same to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy gracious Father, in your infinite love, in your infinite will, uh, holy gracious Father, in infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen in sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over a suffering death. I need to do. On the night he was handed over a suffering death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks. He gave it. Uh, our on the night he was handed over a suffering death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to disciples and said. Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Uh, do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave him thanks, he gave it to him and said, Drink this, all of you. This is uh, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we claim the mystery of faith, 
Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memory of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and new life in him. Sanctify us also, we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. The last day brings all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him, the of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, has taught us for to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, the will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Father God, I pray that you forgive me for breaking the Eucharist before this point. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keeping your rest in life. May the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen. Body of Christ. Oh, Body of Christ. Okay. Okay. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep on us life and Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Body of Christ. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep on us life and Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. Blood of Christ. Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep your house life. The Father, the Son, Holy Ghost, and Amen. Blood of Christ. Continue with a psalm. Mm. Psalm number nine. Okay. Psalm number twenty three. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Since now unto the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sounds of heart, through Christ the Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in knowledge and love of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be among you and may with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the day of Christ. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.